Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and welcome back to Fine Tuning. In a previous video, I talked about how loopers are an excellent gift for guitar players and how I think every guitar player should probably have a looper, uh, no matter what kind of genre or whatever you play, because a looper can be really helpful. Now, there are tons of different looper pedals that are available on the market today um, in all kinds of different price ranges with all kinds of different feature sets. Um, some of the more popular ones are ones like the uh, TC Electronic Ditto is very popular, as is the Digitech Jam Man and the Boss RC3. And today, I've got a looper pedal uh, from Lakato or Lekato, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, the Chinese uh, kind of mini pedal company. And this one I think is particularly cool because of the price point and some of the features that it gives you. It's jam-packed with features. Currently, you can purchase this looper pedal on Amazon for $58.99 with free delivery if you are a Prime member. And uh, just for comparison, uh, like the TC Ditto is, I think, just under $90. And the Boss RC3 is maybe like $190. Now, some of these other pedals are going to have other features and stuff like that. But this is very inexpensive for a looper pedal. And as I said, it's jam-packed with features. So let's get it out of the box and check it out. So first of all, it comes in this little box that says mini pedal. Because it's a pedal and it's mini. Nicely packaged, kind of like, a, like an iPhone or something. So you can see, it's in here in the little thing. Let's just pull it out. When well, they really got that thing in there, good. It's got the, uh, it's, it's a form-fitted little thing that holds it in there. It comes in this little pedal condom. Let's just pull it out here. And this is what you're looking at. So it's a very tiny pedal. It's basically the size of your standard, like, more pedal. Um, it's actually just a tiny bit shorter. Um, as you can see, it's pretty simple looking. It's got a single foot switch and then you've got a knob here and this is going to be your volume control for your loops and then you've got these little buttons on the side here and these I believe let you adjust the the pitch of the loop which is something we're not going to get too crazy into but you can do that um, and as you can see it's got an input an output jack a DC power right there because um, this pedal like most mini pedals does not have room for a battery in it so this pedal does need to be powered by a 9 volt adapter but any standard kind of 9 volt adapter, as long as it's you know the correct polarity center negative, will do this just fine. In the box, you're gonna get the manual, which is important, so that you know how to use it, but you can also get the manual online. And then you've got this, which is a little uh, USB to micro USB cable, because this pedal has a micro USB out, and you can use that to uh, record loops and then import them into your computer, or vice versa, you can put loops on the pedal you don't have to have any sort of software or anything, it just opens like a regular folder, or at least it does for PC. So a looper is a very simple tool, but just to sum it up very quickly, um, you play something while the looper is recording, and then once you stop playing and hit the button, it will just continue to play whatever you played and in a loop, basically. Uh, so this pedal, uh, you can do up to nine loops at once with up to 40 minutes of recording audio, like up to 40 minutes of overdubs. And I think a single loop, you can have up to 10 minutes of loop, whatever you want it to be, which is a very long time and it's plenty enough time to do any kind of like chord progression, something that you want to play over. So let's, uh, let's check it out and practice. Okay, so now I've got the looper here on the floor. Let's talk about how we've got it plugged in. There are basically two major ways that you can plug in a looper to use, um, one of which is going to be in the cleanest possible way that you can get the signal. So since I'm using drive from the amplifier, I'm using my Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit, um, I have the looper pedal in the effects loop of that amp so that no matter what I play, it's going to reproduce that as cleanly as possible. Now the other thing you can do is put it in front of all that stuff, put it in front of the amp, and then you can use that to kind of mess with dialing in your tone, which we'll come back to in a minute. But let's just check out how the looper works first. So when you first plug the looper in, if you don't do anything, you're just going to see it light up with the number one. And that tells you that that is the first loop that is armed. And so when you hit the button, it's going to start recording that loop. Now that volume control, you can see right there, is going to allow you to adjust the volume of what you just played. So let's just check it out. So here's, here's just the clean guitar sound. <laughs> So if I just play something and then step on the loop, it's going to record whatever it is I play. So here we go.
So one of the things that makes this pedal really cool, as you can see it's looping there, is as it plays through the loop, it takes the little LEDs and lights up around and lets you know when the end of the loop is coming back around, which is really helpful. And especially if you're one of those people that likes to build multiple kind of textures with looping, or if you do that acoustic thing where you build in, you know, like your drum sounds and stuff by smacking on the acoustic guitar, you could do this kind of thing where you build up stuff. So that's the first part. Like I said, you can adjust the volume with this. So straight up and down seems to be right about unity gain. Now unity gain just means that it's the exact same volume that you played just being reproduced over and over again. Generally, if you are going to play over top of this, you might want to turn that down a little bit so that you can hear yourself over it or have another sound that you activate that is a little bit louder than the original loop. So let's just play over it. So first of all, I'm just gonna bring it back to unity gain and play over top of it and then I'll adjust the volume so that you can hear kind of uh, the, how you find the sweet spot. Okay, so that's kind of using it as, uh, you know, like a, having a second guitar player almost that you can play a loop and then you can play over top of it so you can practice your chops, improvise things, uh, write new passages, however you'd like to use it. Now, if you want to, you can layer other sounds with that. So you do that by, now that we're looping, you just hit the button again and it's gonna start recording loop number two. So let's do that. So all I did there was just play something a little bit different over top of what I was already playing and by kicking it in at the correct time when the loop comes back around, then you get a kind of layered loop effect. So if you want to stop the loop, all you need to do is once you've already got a loop playing is just double tap on the foot switch. So if we start a loop. Now we have stopped the loop. Now it hasn't deleted the original loop, it's just stopped the one that we were using. So if I wanna start it up again, I just hit the button. All right, so that's all you need to do to start and stop the loop. Now if you want to delete the loop that you have in, that you want to make a new loop, then when you're in the stop mode, you just hold the foot switch down. And there you go. Now you've got a, a clean slate for which to work with for your new loop. All right, so let's talk about the other major way that you can use a looper. And this is something I do a lot and I think it's very helpful. Um, when you're trying to dial in a sound, whether it be uh, by adjusting knobs on your amp or moving microphone placement or whatever you wanna do, tweaking knobs on an effects pedal, what you can do is instead of putting the looper in the effects loop, or if you're running a clean amp, you would put it in the very last in the chain if you wanted to get that kind of clean reproduction of whatever you're playing, 
Instead of that, what you want to do is put it in front of all of your effects, of all the distortion and everything, so that it's the first thing that you hit. So in this situation, you want to have the knob straight up and down in the unity gain mode because you want it to be ex an exact re reproduction of your guitar tone. And then what you can do is play a loop. Um, I would recommend, for instance, if you're, if you're trying to dial in a tone for a song, go ahead and play the riff for the song that you're trying to dial in and then hit the loop and then you can just start adjusting settings. So, for instance, let's go to kind of a drive sound. Alright, so let's say I want to play a riff something like that but I want to adjust the tone of my amp and not have to play and then adjust the knobs and then play and then adjust the knobs. Instead, what I can do is play this into a loop and then once the loop is going, now that loop is going directly into the amp sound and then I can just stop and play with the knobs and not be playing guitar anymore. So let's just play a little loop. Now you can hear, because I'm in front of all this stuff, as I turn the volume down, it's kind of like turning the volume down on the guitar rather than turning the volume of the entire loop down, which is basically what we want to do here is have it in the unity gain setting so that we're getting the closest reproduction of our guitar sound and then we can mess with the tones on the amp or on the pedal or whatever. So again, we're going to put it at midway and then I'm going to adjust some knobs on the amp and you'll hear the amp will change. Um, and the loop will keep going and allow us to do that without play. So as you can hear, using the looper like this is a really, really helpful way to be able to dial in the sound that you want or move microphones around for mic placement or recording. And once you've played something and you leave that knob in the halfway point, it's like you're just continuing to play, but you don't have to think about it anymore. You can just stop and adjust things as you need to. So it's a really helpful tool in that respect. Okay, so there you go. That's the uh, Lekito or Lekato uh, looper pedal. I said one of the cool things about this is one it's very inexpensive it's less than sixty dollars which is outstanding value i think it is a true bypass so it doesn't change your tone which is a of course a big plus um, in comparison to something like the ditto which is a very popular pedal i think i would probably rather have this because it actually tells you with an led readout uh, where the loop is and where it's going to come back around so for me that's really helpful and this is you know 20 or 30 dollars less than that pedal. I hope that's been helpful. Um, this is really cool. My dad's going to get this uh, as part of his Christmas present, um, but I'm going to get another one, I would say, probably just like this. So anyway, I uh, hope that's been helpful, and until next time, I will catch you later. Um, one of the things I think is funny about some of these pedals, uh, the ones that are made in China like this, is that when they're doing the Amazon listings, their English maybe doesn't translate perfectly. This tuner function, built-in high sensitivity tuning function, continuous switching, will not cause discordant interruption between the phrase. Let you enjoy your own fun and colorful life. <laughs> so just so you know, this pedal will let you enjoy your own fun and colorful life.